naive equations there are two circles c1 and c2 and radius of c2 is twice that of c1 now from a point p on c2 tangents p a and p b are drawn to c1 so this is your c1 and that's your c2 now from a point on c2 we have drawn tangents to this circle now this point is a and this is b and that's your point p now we join point of contacts with center we get this this is 90 and this is 90 this radius is r this is r and this is 2r and if we find this angle theta we know that sine theta is 1 by 2 that is this theta it is 30 degrees so this angle it is 30 degrees now we'll complete this triangle PAB and let this point be C now this angle it is 60 degrees then we can write OC as R cos 60 so it is R by 2 then basically PC it will be 2R minus R by 2 and that will be 3R by 2 now this PC it is median now if we take this point as G then PG is R and GC is 3R by 2 minus R which is R by 2 that means PG is to GC is 2 is to 1 that means this G it is centroid of triangle PAB and this centroid it lies on C1 and this is what we need to prove in this question. Now the question is a circle passes through three points A, B and C with the line segment AC as its diameter. A line passing through A intersects the chord BC at point D inside the circle. If angle DAB and CAB are alpha and beta and the distance between the point A and midpoint of line segment DC is D, prove that area of the circle is given expression. So we have this circle and AC is one of the diameters. So we have this diameter AC and then we have a point B and we construct this triangle ABC. This triangle ABC with this angle B is 90 degrees and this is your center say O and we join B with O. Now through this point A, a line is drawn which intersects BC at this point D. That says angle DAB and CAB are alpha and beta. So angle DAB is alpha and this whole angle it is beta. That says distance of A with midpoint of line segment CD it is D. So if we take this midpoint as M, so this is equal to this. then this distance is given as D. Basically, we have to find radius of this circle. Now, what we'll say is, we'll say this is origin and radius is suppose R, then this is R comma 0 and A is minus R comma 0. Now, this angle is beta, then angle at the center will be this 2 beta. So, coordinate of this point B will be R cos 2 beta and r sine 2 beta. Now what we'll do is we'll first write equation of BC and for that we'll find slope of this line. Now slope of BC will be y2 minus y1 and which is r sine 2 beta upon x2 minus x1 so there'll be this r cos 2 beta minus 1. Now this r and r will cancel. This is 
2 sin beta cos beta and here will be this minus 2 sin square beta now this 2 sin beta will cancel so this is minus cot beta and we have this point so once we have point and slope we can write equation of bc so equation of bc will be given by y minus 0 equals minus cot b x minus r or simply we can write this as x plus y 10 beta and it is equal to r and that's our first equation now we find equation of ad now this angle dac it is beta minus alpha so slope of this line ad will be simply 10 beta minus alpha and once we have this point and slope we can write the equation so equation of ad it will be y minus 0 10 beta minus alpha and x plus r this is y equals 10 beta minus alpha into x plus r and that's our second equation now we'll solve these two equations to find this point d so what we'll do is we put the value of y here now y is minus cot beta x minus r and will be equal to 10 beta minus alpha into x plus r now we'll take x together and r together so we'll get x as 10 beta minus alpha plus cot beta and will be this r cot beta minus 10 beta minus alpha now we'll change everything in sine and cos so it'll be this x and then this is sine beta minus alpha sine beta cos beta minus alpha cos beta whole divided by cos beta minus alpha sine beta and here will be this r cos beta cos beta minus alpha minus sine beta sin beta minus alpha divided by sin beta cos beta minus alpha now cos beta minus alpha sin beta will cancel now this is cos a cos b plus sin a sin b it is cos a minus b so it'll be simply cos beta minus beta minus alpha and this is cos a cos b minus sin a sin b so there'll be cos a plus b so we can write this is cos beta plus beta minus alpha now this is x cos alpha and this is r cos 2 beta minus alpha so x coordinate of d it will be r cos 2 beta minus alpha upon cos alpha and now we can find y and we know that y is 10 beta minus alpha into x plus r so there will be 10 beta minus alpha x is this value plus r so we will take this r common and then we will have cos 2 beta minus alpha upon cos alpha plus 1 which is r 10 beta minus alpha and this is cos 2 beta minus alpha plus cos alpha upon cos alpha 
Now this is cos c plus cos d. And if you put the formula for cos c plus cos d, we write r10 beta minus alpha. Now this is cos c plus cos d, which is 2 cos c plus d by 2. So it'll be this 2 cos c plus d alpha will cancel. So it'll be this cos beta and then cos c minus d by 2. And then it'll be this cos beta minus alpha upon cos alpha. Now 10 is basically sine upon cos. So this cos part will cancel. So we'll get this y coordinate as 2r sine beta minus alpha cos beta upon cos alpha. So once we have x and y, we can write coordinate of this point D and coordinate of this point D will be given by r cos 2 beta minus alpha upon cos alpha comma 2r sine beta minus alpha cos beta upon cos alpha. Now we already have coordinate of c and c is r comma 0. So we find midpoint of cd which is m. So coordinate of this point m will be this r cos 2 beta minus alpha plus cos alpha upon 2 cos alpha and here it is 2r sin beta minus alpha cos beta upon cos alpha divided by 2. Now here this 2 and 2 will cancel. Now this is cos c plus cos d we can write 2 cos c plus d by 2 into cos c minus d by 2. So it will be this m and this is r and this is 2 cos c plus d is beta and c minus d is beta minus alpha upon cos alpha and this is r sine beta minus alpha cos beta upon cos alpha and we have this 2 here so this 2 and 2 will cancel so there is a coordinate of m now once we have m we know that this distance a m it is given as d so basically a m square is equal to d square so we can write a m square it is equal to d square and a m is distance between a and m and a is minus r comma 0 so it will be this r square and here we'll have cos beta cos beta minus alpha upon cos alpha plus one whole square and plus and here we will have sine beta minus alpha cos beta upon cos alpha whole square. Now we simplify this we can write r square and here will be this cos square beta upon cos square alpha. Now this is cos square beta minus alpha and this is sine square beta minus alpha and then plus 1 plus 2 cos beta cos beta minus alpha upon cos alpha. So basically we can write this r square as d square cos square alpha upon cos square beta plus cos square alpha plus 2 cos alpha cos beta and cos beta minus alpha. So we have got this r square in terms of d alpha and beta and we need area of this circle. So area of this circle is pi r square. So all we need to do is we have to multiply it with pi. So area of the circle is pi d square cos square alpha 
upon cos square beta plus cos square alpha plus 2 cos alpha cos beta and cos beta minus alpha. And this is what we need to prove in this question. Now the question is, if this circle intersects another circle of radius 5 in such a manner that common chord is of maximum length and has a slope equal to 3 by 4, then coordinates of the center of C2 are. So we have this circle whose center is at origin and radius is 4 units. Now we have this another circle for which common chord is of maximum length. Now maximum length of common chord will be equal to diameter of this given circle. So common chord of the two circles will pass through center and we need this common chord whose slope is 3 by 4. So we will draw this common chord. Now we need to find center of this circle. Now equation of this line is y equals 3 by 4x or simply 3x minus 4y equals 0. Now radius of this second circle it is 5 units. So suppose its center is C. This radius is 5 units. This is 4. So perpendicular distance is 3 units. Now we write this equation in terms of parameter coordinates. So we can write this is x minus 0 upon cos theta equals y minus 0 upon sin theta and it is equal to plus or minus 3. And basically product of slope is minus 1. So we can write 3 by 4 into 10 theta. It is minus 1 or simply 10 theta is minus 4 by 3. Now if we draw this basic triangle this is 4, 3 and this is 5. Now sine and cos they will have opposite sign. Now if we take cos as 3 by 5 then x will be plus minus 9 by 5 and y will be minus plus 12 by 5. So center of the circle will be at plus minus 9 by 5 and minus plus 12 by 5 and that's your option B. Now here the question is 8 spheres of radius 1 unit kept on a table with their centers at the vertices of regular octagon and each sphere touching its two neighbors. If the sphere is placed in the center of the table touching all the 8 spheres then its radius is. Now what we do is we view the situation from the top view as well as from the front view. Now this is the top view of this question where we can see the centers of all the circles where corresponding positions on this octagon and as you can see they are intersecting circles. Actually they are not intersecting circles but touching spheres. Now if we look at their front view then on the table at the center we will have this sphere whose radius is r and then there will be two smaller spheres touching it. And that is the reason when you go look from the top, you won't see circles touching each other. Now this radius is 1 and this radius is r. And this is distance between the centers d. Now this is 1 and this is r and this length is r minus 1. So in this triangle say C1, C2 and A, this is 90, then we can write C1, C2 square, A will be equal to A C1 square plus A C2 square. Now C1, C2 is 1 plus R, so it will be this R plus 1 square. Now A C1 square, it is distance between the centers D square plus A C2 square and A C2 square is R minus 1 square. So from here we get d square as 4r and that's our first equation. Now if we look at this distance d from the top view then this distance is distance between the centers. So it is this distance d and now this length it is 1 and 1 2 units. 
and this angle is 2 pi by 8 which is pi by 4. Now we can find D using cosine rule. We can write cos pi by 4 will be equal to D square plus D square minus 2 square upon 2D square. So it will be this 1 by root 2 D square minus 2 upon D square. Now we can simplify this as d square that is root 2 d square minus 2 root 2 or basically d square is 2 root 2 upon root 2 minus 1. Now if we rationalize this, it will be this 2 root 2 root 2 plus 1. Now d square is equal to 4 r. So if we equate d square with 4 r, we get 4 r equals 2 root 2 root 2 plus 1. Now 2 root 2 and 4 will cancel. So it will be this root 2 here. Then this r it will be 1 plus 1 by root 2. And that's your option d. Now here the question is if theta is the angle of intersection of two circles, then length of common chord of the two circles is which of the following? I hear this question is a little incorrect. This theta is not angle of intersection of two circles. This theta is angle between two radius of the circle. So basically what we have is we have this origin and we have this point C comma zero and we are given angle between these two radius. This is A, this is B and this angle is theta. And that's your C. Now we can write cos theta as A square plus B square minus C square upon 2AB or basically C is under root of A square plus B square minus 2AB cos theta. Now we can write area of this triangle area of this triangle is half AB sin theta and will also be equal to area of triangle calculated from perpendicular and base. So it will be equal to this 1 by 2 into now this is suppose AB and this is half the length of the chord. So we will write this as L by 2 into its base which is C. Now this 2 and 2 will cancel. So we can write this L as 2AB sin theta upon C and C is this value. So this length of chord will be 2AB sin theta upon under root of A square plus B square minus 2AB cos theta which is your option C. So it is not angle of intersection of two circles. Basically it is angle between line joining their point of intersection with their centers. Now here the question is inside a big circle exactly 24 small circles each with radius 2 can be drawn in such a way that each small circle touches the big circle and also touches both it adjacent small circles then radius of this big circle is. Now we are given a big circle. And inside this big circle, we have 24 small circles which touch each other. So we have these 24 small circles. And suppose these are the centers, and this is the center of this bigger circle. Now we draw this common tangent, we will pass through the center, and here this is 90 degrees. And this also is 90 degrees. Now this is 2. Now we know that this entire angle will be 2 pi by 24. Then this half angle will be pi by 24. Now let this point be P. Now we can write OP as 2 cosec pi by 24. And this 
larger radius r will be this op plus 2 so this radius r will be simply 2 plus 2 cosec pi by 24 and that's your option a now we can further simplify this as 2 and this is 1 plus sine pi by 24 and here it is sine pi by 24 and we know that 1 plus sine 2 theta is sine theta plus cos theta whole square so we can add this as 2 and this is sine pi by 48 plus cos pi by 48 whole square upon sine pi by 24 that means this option d is also correct so the correct options are a and d now in the questions we are given a passage in which we are given that let s be a circle in xy plane defined by the equation x square plus y square equals 4 so we have this circle with center at origin and radius equals 2 units let e1 e2 and f1 f2 be the chords of s passing through the point p0 1 comma 1 parallel to x axis and y axis respectively let g1 g2 be the chord of s passing through p0 and having slope minus 1 let tangent to s at e1 e2 meets at e3 and tangent to s at f1 f2 meet at f3 the tangent to s at g1 g2 meet at g3 then the points e3 f3 and g3 lie on which are the following curves now it says we have this point p0 which is 1 comma 1 and 1 comma 1 is going to lie inside this circle so this point is p0 then a line passing through p0 parallel to x-axis and we have a line passing through p0 parallel to y-axis so this is e1 e2 and this point is f1 and this other point is f2 now this line is y is equal to 1 and this is the line x equals 1 now if we put y equals 1 here we will get x is plus minus root 3 so this e1 is minus root 3 comma 1 and e2 is root 3 comma 1 and if we put x as 1 in this equation we will get y as plus minus root 3 so it will be this 1 comma root 3 and 1 comma minus root 3 so we have coordinates of e1 e2 and f1 f2 now it says now it says let g1 g2 be the chord of s passing through p0 and having slope minus 1 so this is this line which passes through p0 and slope of this line is minus 1 so equation of this line will be y minus 1 minus 1 x minus 1 or simply x plus y equals 2 so this point basically g1 is 0 comma 2 and g2 will be 2 comma 0 now it says tangents to s at e1 and e2 meets at e3 so if we write tangent at e1 it is given by t equals to 0 so this equation will be minus root 3x plus y it is equal to 4 and at e2 again will be t equals 0 so there will be root 3x plus y and it is equal to 4 now here we get y as 4 and x as 0 so basically coordinate of this point e3 it is 0 comma 4 now in the same way we can write equation of tangent at f1 now at f1 equation of tangent is given by x plus root 3 y equals 4 and x minus root 3 y equals 4 now here x is 4 and y is 0 so that's your f3 and it says tangents at g1 and g2 meet at g3 
now g1 g2 they are here right so this point of intersection will be simply 2 comma 2 so this g3 it is 2 comma 2 and these three points they are collinear and they will have this line x plus y is equal to 4 so answer to this question is this option a x plus y equals 4 now the second part is let p be a point on this circle s with both coordinates being positive let tangent to s at p intersect the coordinate axis at points m and n then the midpoint of line segment m n must lie on this curve so we have to find basically locus of midpoint of m n now suppose there is a point p and we'll take this p in terms of parameter coordinates let it be 2 cos theta and 2 sin theta then we know that equation of tangent is given by t equals 0 so this equation will be 2 cos theta x plus 2 sin theta y it is equal to 4 or x cos theta plus y sin theta equals 2. Now it intersects x axis and y axis at m and n. So this m will be 2 secant theta comma 0 and this m will be 0 comma 2 cosec theta. Now we will find locus of midpoint of m n. Now suppose this point is alpha comma beta. So we will get alpha is secant theta and beta is cosec theta. Now we will eliminate theta. We know that sin square theta plus cos square theta is 1. So we will get 1 upon alpha square plus 1 upon beta square equals 1 or alpha square plus beta square equals alpha square beta square and then we will replace alpha with x and beta with y. So this required locus will be x square plus y square equals x square y square and that's your option D. So it matches with this option D. And question number 12 we are given that let G be a circle of radius r which is greater than 0 and G1, G2 and Gn be n circles of equal radius r. Suppose that each of n circles touches the circle externally and each circle touches its next circle and Gn touches G1. So we have this circle whose radius is r and then we have these circles which touch each other and it will continue up to g1 and gn. Now if we look at any two circles this angle it will be simply 2 pi by n. Now if we look at this triangle this half angle it will be simply pi by n this small radius is r this is r and this capital radius is capital R. So from here we can write sine pi by n it will be equal to r upon r plus r or we can write r plus r is r cosec pi by n or we can write r upon r equals cosec pi by n minus 1. So from this figure we have got this relation. Now for this option A it says if n is 4 then r is greater than r into root 2 minus 1. So what we will do is we will put n is 4. Now we put n is 4 we will get r upon r as cosec pi by 4 minus 1 which is root 2 minus 1. So in this case this r it should be equal to root 2 minus 1 into r and not greater than that. That means this option A is incorrect. Now for option B, we will put n as 5. Now if we put n as 5, we will get r upon r equals cosec pi by 5 minus 1. Now basically pi by 5, it will be greater than pi by 6. Now cosec, it is a decreasing function. So we can write cosec pi by 5, it will be less than 
cosec pi by 6 and cosec pi by 6 is 2. So from here we can write cosec pi by 5 minus 1 will be less than 1. So this value will be less than 1. So from here we can write r should be less than r. That means this option b is also incorrect. Now for this option c, we will take n as 8. If we take n as 8, we can write r upon r equals cosec pi by 8 minus 1. Now pi by 8 is less than pi by 4. Cosec pi by 8 will be greater than cosec pi by 4 which is root 2. So cosec pi by 8 minus 1 will be greater than root 2 minus 1. So it will be greater than root 2 minus 1. So in this case for n equals 8 r should be greater than root 2 minus 1 into r. That means this option c is correct. So this option c is correct. r is greater than root 2 minus 1 into r. And for n equals 12 we can write r upon r as cosec pi by 12 minus 1. So this is cosec 15 degrees minus 1. Now cosec 15 degrees is 2 root 2 root 3 minus 1 and then minus 1. Now we will rationalize it. So it will be this root 2 into root 3 plus 1 minus 1 and it will be less than root 2 into root 3 plus 1. So from here we can write r should be less than root 2 into root 3 plus 1 into r. That means this option D is also correct. So the only correct options are C and D. Now here the question is, if P1, P2 and P3 are altitudes of a triangle which circumscribe a circle of diameter 4 by 3, then the least value of P1 plus P2 plus P3 is equal to what? Now we have this triangle, say ABC. And suppose I is its in center. And we have this circle which is its in circle and the radius of in circle is 2 by 3. Now suppose sides of this triangle are A, B and C. Now that area of triangle is given by half P1 into A will be equal to half P2 into B and that will be equal to half P3 into C. So P1, it is equal to 2 delta upon A, P2 is equal to 2 delta upon B and P3 is equal to 2 delta upon C. That is the value of P1 plus P2 plus P3 will be 2 delta into 1 upon A plus 1 upon B plus 1 upon C and that's our first equation. Now we have to find this expression in terms of delta. Now this triangle ABC, it consists of three triangles and area of this triangle ABC will be equal to sum of areas of these three triangles and sum of areas is 1 by 2 and we know that this perpendicular it is R. So it will be this R into A plus B plus C. So we can write this delta as 1 by 2 into r and value of r is 2 by 3 so it will be this 1 by 3 a plus b plus c and we will put it here we can write p1 plus p2 plus p3 it will be equal to 2 by 3 into a plus b plus c into 1 upon a plus 1 upon b plus 1 upon c. Now since a, b, c are sides of a triangle they are positive so we can use a, m and h, m and we know that arithmetic mean is always greater than or equal to 
their harmonic means. So it will be this 1 upon A plus 1 upon B plus 1 upon C. So from here we can say this product A plus B plus C into 1 upon A plus 1 upon B plus 1 upon C will be greater than or equal to 9. So we put this value here. So this P1 plus P2 plus P3 will always be greater than or equal to 6. And that is the answer to this question. Now here the question is prove that a common tangent to the two circles of a coaxial system. Now it says prove that a common tangent to two circles of a coaxial system subtends a right angle at either limiting points of the system. Now suppose system of coaxial circles is given by x square plus y square plus 2gx plus c equals to 0 and it represents system of all coaxial circles for which radical axis is y axis. Now suppose we have two circles in this system. And we have their common tangent. And suppose these points of contacts are A and B. Now we also have to find limiting points. Now for this, radius of the circle is under root G square minus C. And for limit points, radius must be 0. So we get Gs plus or minus under root C. So the limit points are plus minus under root c comma 0. Now suppose center of the circles are at minus g1 comma 0 and minus g2 comma 0. Now let us say any one limit point say this one under root c comma 0. Now we have to prove that this tangent it subtends right angle at this limit point. Now suppose this point is P and it is 0 comma K. Now we can write P A square which is S1 and it will be this K square plus C and it will also be equal to P B square. So basically P A is equal to PB and if we find this CP then CP square is also C plus K square. So if we draw a circle through this point P with AB as diameter it will pass through this point C and therefore this angle it is 90 degrees. So from here we can say this angle ACB this is 90 degrees and this is what we need to prove in this question. Now here the question is two circles with center at A and B touch at T. BD is tangent at D and TC is common tangent. AT has length 3 and BT has length 2 then the length of CD is. So we have two circles with centers at A and B. So this is your circle 1 and so on. this is your circle 2 and their centers they are at a and B and they touch each other at this point T. Now we have a common tangent TC and BD is tangent at D. So this BD it is tangent at D and this point is C. Now it says AT is 3 bt is 2 so this radius is 3 and this radius is 2 we have to find length of cd now this is 3 and this whole length will be 4 units now if this is theta we can write 10 theta 
and 10 theta will be 3 by 4. Now in this triangle BTC we can write cos theta equals BI upon BC. Now cos theta is 4 by 5, BT is 2 and this is BC. So basically your BC is 5 by 2 and if BC is 5 by 2 then CD is 4 minus 5 by 2 which is 3 by 2 and that's your option B. Now here the question is a circle of radius unity is centered at origin. So we have this circle whose center is at origin and radius is 1 unit. It says two particles start moving in the same time from the point 1 comma 0. So we have this point say A which is 1 comma 0 and move around the circles in opposite direction. When the particle moves counterclockwise with speed V. So one particle it is going to move with the speed V and the other it moves clockwise with the speed 3V. Now after leaving 1 comma 0 the two particles first meet at point P and continue until they meet next at point Q. The coordinate of point Q R. Now since their velocities are in the ratio 1 is to 3. So if this first particle is going to cover theta, this second particle is going to cover 3 theta. So when this first particle, it has moved pi by 2, this second particle, it would have moved 3 pi by 2 in the clockwise direction. So at first, they are going to meet at this point P and this is 0 comma 1. Now hereafter again they will move. So again this first particle it is going to cover pi by 2 and the second particle it is going to cover 3 pi by 2. So next they are going to meet at this point which is minus 1 comma 0 and that's your point Q. So coordinate of this point Q is minus 1 comma 0 and that's your option D. Now here the question is consider circle x square plus y square equals 1 and this point 1 comma root 3 if p a b is secant drawn from point p intersecting the circle at a and b then the range of p a and p b is now we have this circle x square plus y square equals 1 center at origin and then we have this point 1 comma root 3 now we have drawn the secant which intersects the circle at a and b. Now if we draw this tangent when this point is t we know that p a into p b is p t square and p t square in this case is 3. Now we know that a m is always greater than equal to g m so p a plus p b by 2 will always be greater than because P A and P B they cannot be equal under root of P A into P B and P A into P B is 3. So it is root 3. So this P A plus P B it is always greater than 2 root 3. We get the maximum value of P A and P B if the second passes through its center. So this is a and this is B. Now this OP, OP is 2. So this PA will be 1 and PB will be 3. So maximum value of PA plus PB it is 4. So that means this PA plus PB will lie between 2 root 3 and 4 where 2 root 3 is not included and 4 is included. That means this option B is correct. Now the question is for each natural number k let ck denote the circle with radius k centimeters and center at origin. Now on the circle ck a particle moves k centimeter in the counterclockwise direction after completing its motion on ck 
the particle moves to ck plus 1 in the radial direction the motion of particle continues in this manner if particle starts at 1 comma 0 and if the particle crosses the positive direction of x axis for the first time on circle cn then n is what now the situation is on this ck circle with radius k particle moves k centimeter and then it moves to k plus 1 where it is going to move k plus 1 centimeter now we know that theta equals l by r on each circle this length and radius it is same so this theta will be 1 so on each circle this particle will move one radian now since it starts with 1 comma 0 on the first circle it'll move one radian then it'll move to the second circle where again it'll move one radian so it'll keep doing it and somewhere it is going to cross positive x-axis again now we know that this entire angle is 2 pi, 2 pi is 6 point something. Now this 6th radian angle will be crossed when the value of n is 6 and then it will move to this n equals 7 and for n equals 7 it will again be one more radian. Now this 2 pi will lie between 6 and 7 so it will lie on this 7th circle. So in this case value of n will be simply 7 and that is the answer to this question. Let PQ and RS be tangents at the extremities of diameter PR of circle of radius R. If PS and RQ intersect at a point X on the circumference of the circle, then 2R is equal to what? So we have this circle whose diameter is PR and then PQ and RS, they are tangents. PQ. and rs their tangents ps and rq intersect at so we have this ps and then we have rq and they intersect on the circle at this point x then we have to find the value of 2r where r is radius of the circle now this angle it is 90 degrees these two angles also they're 90 now if this is theta this is 90 minus theta then this angle is also theta and here this angle is also theta now we need the result in terms of pq and rs now if we write 10 theta in this triangle qpr then 10 theta it will be equal to pr which is 2r upon pq and we can also write 10 theta in this triangle prs and in this case 10 theta is simply rs upon 2r now from here we can say 2r square it is equal to pq into rs or simply 2r is equal to under root of pq into rs and that's your option a now here the question is from a point P on the circle with center O called PA 8 cm is drawn. The radius of the circle is 24 cm. Let PB be drawn parallel to OA and suppose OB extended meets PA extended at M. The length of M is 9 cm. Now for this statement one, we have this circle with center O. And suppose we have this chord AP. So this is A. So we have this point, say P here. Length of AP is 8 units. Radius is 24. And it says PB is drawn parallel to OA. So we have drawn this PB, which is parallel to OA. 
now bo extended so we have extended this bo and it meets extended pa at this point m now it says length of m a is 9 centimeters now this is 24 and if we draw perpendicular here and here and say these points are q and r now suppose this ar it is x then or is 24 minus x and so is pq so this pq is 24 minus x and this is radius so this is 24 now in this triangle we can write oq square is 24 square minus 24 minus x whole square and this oq square it is equal to pr square which from this triangle arp we can write 8 square 64 minus x square now will be 48x minus x square and there will be 64 minus x square so this x square will cancel so this x will be 4 by 3 so value of x is 4 by 3 now in this triangle m p b o is parallel to p b then we can write m a upon m p will be equal to o a upon b p now we can also write this as m a upon m p minus m a and will be equal to o a upon bp minus oa now mp minus m is ap so we can write ma upon ap and they'll be equal to oa and o is simply 24 upon bp bp is 2 times 24 minus x minus oa which is 24 now ap is 8 so we can write m a upon 8 and will be equal to 24 upon and this is 24 minus 2 into x and the value of x is 4 by 3 so it will be this m a by 8 and if we divide everything with 8 it will be 3 and then 9 minus 1 8 into 3 so value of am is simply 9 centimeter that means the statement 1 is correct now statement 2 is OA's radius of the circle with center at O and R is point on OA through which a chord CD perpendicular to OA is drawn let a chord through A meets the chord CD at M and circle at B and also OS is perpendicular from O on chord AB if the radius of circle is 18 cm and R is the midpoint of AO and AM upon MB is 1 by 2, then length of OS is 9 cm. So now we'll draw conditions given in the second statement. So for this second statement, we are given a circle whose one of the radius is OA. So this is O and this is A. Now there is a point R on OA through which a perpendicular chord CD is drawn. So we have this perpendicular chord CD which is drawn through this point R. Now there is another chord which passes through A and which intersects the circle at B. So this point is B and it intersects CD at this point M. It says OS is perpendicular from O to chord AB. So we have OS which is perpendicular to this chord AB. 
Now it says if the radius of circle is 18 centimeter, so we have OA as 18 and OB as 18 and AM is to MB it is 1 by 2 and this R is midpoint of OA. So basically this OR it is 9 and RA is also 9. So OR equals RA and it is equal to 9 and AM is to MB is 1 is to 2 that means this AM is 1 third AB and AS is 1 by 2 AB since it is perpendicular from the center. Now we'll prove that these two triangles, triangle ARM, it is similar to triangle ASO. So this angle A is common, angle ARM is equal to angle ASO. So from A property, these two triangles, they are similar and if they are similar, then AR upon AM will be equal to AS upon OA. Now AR is 9 and this is AM, this is AS and OA is 18. Now AM is 1 by 3 AB so it will be 1 by 3 AB into AS is 1 by 2 AB and it is 9 into 18. So this AB will be 18 root 3. Now AS is half of AB so this AS will be simply 9 root 3 and then in this triangle OSA we can write OS square will be equal to OA square minus SA square and OA square is 18 square minus 9 square into 3. Now this is 9 square into 4 minus 3 1 so it will be equal to 9 square so basically the value of OS is 9 centimeter. So length of OS is 9 centimeter that means this statement 2 is also correct. Now figure 2 is no way close to figure 1. So these two statements are correct independently and answer to this question is both the statements are correct but statement 2 is not a correct explanation to statement 1. That is answer to this question is this option B. Now either questions let ABCD be a quadrilateral with area not K this area is actually 18. So with area 18 with sides AB parallel to side CD and AB is 2 times CD. Let AD be perpendicular to AB and CD. If a circle is drawn inside the quadrilateral ABCD touching all its sides then its radius is. So we have this circle. which touches four sides of a trapezium and this is A, B, C and D and this is 90. This angle is also 90 and area of this trapezium A, B, C, D it is given as 18 square units. Now suppose this is the center of this circle. Now this is R, this is R and this is also R. So this is R, R and R then basically AD it is 2R now this is R and this is also R.
and this is perpendicular. Now, length of CD is say x. It is given that AB is 2 times CD. So, length of AB is 2x. So, basically, this distance, say PC, it is x minus r will also be equal to this distance and length of BQ it is 2x minus r. Now first we'll write this area of ABCD. Now area of this trapezium will be 1 by 2 and then sum of parallel sides so will be simply 3x into perpendicular which is 2r and it is equal to 18. So we'll get this condition that 3xr and it is equal to 18 or we can write x into r equals 6 and that's our first equation. Now here what we'll do is we'll join now suppose this is alpha and this is theta. Now if we write tan alpha, tan alpha will be x minus r upon this value r and we can write tan theta and tan theta is this value 2x minus r upon r. Now we know that theta plus alpha it is pi by 2 then basically 10 theta into 10 alpha it should be 1. So we multiply them then we can write x minus r into 2x minus r upon r square will be equal to 1 or 2x square minus 3xr plus r square will be equal to r square. So from here we get either x is 0 or x is 3r by 2. Now x it cannot be 0 as it is side of the trapezium. So we'll put x as 3r by 2. So we'll get this as 3r square by 2 equals 6 or value of r is simply 2. So answer to this question is this option b r equals 2. Now here the question is a square OABC is formed by lines xy equals 0, xy plus 1 equals x plus y where O is origin. A circle with center C1 inside the square is drawn to touch the line path xy equals 0 and another circle with center C2 and radius twice of C1 is drawn to touch the circle C1. Now we are given xy equals 0 and xy plus 1 equals x plus y. Now if we simplify the second one, we can factorize it. So we can factorize this as 1 minus x into 1 minus y equals 0. So from here we'll get x equal to 1 and y equals to 1. So we'll have this square whose two sides are along x-axis and y-axis and the other two sides are along x equals 1 and y equals 1. So this is a square. Now a circle with center C1 is drawn which touches the pair x, y equals 0. So let us draw this circle. And then we have another circle C2 which touches the other two lines and whose radius is twice of that of this first circle. So we'll draw that as well. Now we have to find radius of this first circle. Now it is given that R2 is 2R1. Now since the circle C1 it touches both the axes, its center will be R1, comma R1 whose radius is R1. Now radius of the second circle is 2R1. So its center will be 1 minus 2R1 and 1 minus 2R1. So we can write C2 as 1 minus 2R1, comma 1 minus 2R1 and its radius will be 2R1. Now since these two circles, they touch each other externally, we can write C1, C2 equals R1 plus R2. Now C1, C2 is 1 minus 3 R1. 
root 2 and that will be equal to 3 r1. Now we can simplify this to find the value of r1. which is your option C. Now the question is, let ABCD be a square of side length 2 unit. C2 is the circle through vertices ABCD and C1 is the circle touching all the sides of square ABCD and L is any line through A. Then this first question is, P is the point of C1 and Q is the point of C2. Then PA square plus PB square plus PC square plus PD square upon QA square plus QB square plus QC square upon QD square is equal to what? So basically, this ratio, it is fixed. It doesn't depend on which point we are taking on C1 and which point we are taking on C2. So what we'll do is, without loss of generality, we'll assume this square with two sides on coordinate axis. So it is 0, 0, 2, 0, 0, 2, and comma 2. Now suppose this point is A, this is B, this is C and this is D. Now center of this square it is at 1 comma 1. This point is 1 comma 1. Then we have this circle which touches all the four sides and that's your circle C1. Now for C1 radius is 1 unit. So this C1 is x minus 1 square plus y minus 1 square equals 1. And C2 is a circle which passes through all the four vertices. Now for C2, radius is root 2. So equation of C2 is x minus 1 square plus y minus 1 square and it is equal to 2. Now it says, we have taken a point P on C1. So we have this circle C1 and we have to take a point P on this. We can take this point P as 1 plus cos theta and 1 plus sin theta. Now first we'll simplify this PA square plus PB square plus PC square plus PD square and it should come independent of theta. Now PA square is 1 plus cos theta square plus 1 plus sin theta square. Now PB square is 1 minus cos theta square plus 1 plus sin theta square. PC square is 1 minus cos theta square plus 1 minus sin theta square and PD square is 1 plus cos theta square plus 1 minus sin theta whole square. Now basically it is 2 times 1 plus cos theta square and 1 minus cos theta square plus 1 plus sin theta square and 1 minus sin theta square. Now here this is 2. Now here we we'll get this as 2 plus 2 cos square theta. 2 cos theta will cancel. In the same way we will get 2 plus 2 sin square theta. Now cos square theta plus sin square theta it is 1. So it will be 6. 6 into 2 is 12. So value of PA square plus PB square plus PC square plus PD square it is 12. And because it is an objective question, the simplest way to do it is, we know that this value, it should come out independent of theta. So it's better to put any known point. So we can take this point and this point is 1 comma 0. So if we take this P as 1 comma 0, then this sum of squares will again come out to be 12. Now this PA square is 1, PB square is 1, and now PC square is 5 
and PD square is 5. So again, this value, it comes out to be 12. So you could have got the answer just by assuming a point rather than solving it in a more general way. But however, here we have to solve it generally. Now let this point Q be 1 plus root 2 cos theta and 1 plus root 2 sin theta. Now in this case, everything will be same except with cos theta and sin theta, we'll always have this root 2. So when we will find this QA square plus QB square plus QC square plus QD square, it will be this 2 and then 1 plus root 2 cos theta square and then 1 minus root 2 cos theta square and here will be 1 plus root 2 sin theta square and 1 minus root 2 sin theta square. Now this is 2 and here will be this 2 plus 4 cos square theta and here will be this 2 plus 4 sin square theta. Now this is 4 plus 4, 8, 8 into 2 is 16. Now we will find the ratio. So this ratio will be 12 by 16, which is 3 by 4 or 0.75 and that's your option A. And for Q also we could have taken a simple point. So we could have taken this origin. Now this distance is 0, here this distance is 2 square. This distance again is 2 square and here this distance is 4 plus 4. So it will be 16. So we could have solved this question by assuming general points as we know this value is independent of the points that we are going to choose. Now the second question is a circle touches the line L and C1 externally such that both the circles are on the same side of the line. Then locus of center of circle is. So for the second part. What we given is we have a fixed circle and we have fixed line L equals 0 and we have the circle which touches the circle and the straight line. Now we will find locus of center of this circle. Now suppose this point is P and it is alpha beta. Now this is your fixed circle and suppose radius of this fixed circle is R and this is C1 and its radius is R1 and this is this radius R. Now we know that this C1 P it will be R1 plus R and this PM it will be simply R. Now what we'll do is, if we take a fixed line, which is parallel to L, and which is at a distance of R plus R1, and we call this line as LH equals to zero, then in that case, this C1P will be equal to this P M dash, that is, distance of this point from a fixed point and a fixed line is same. So if the distance from fixed point and fixed line is same, then this point it lies on parabola. So locus of this circle will be a parabola in this case. Now this third part it says a line M through A is drawn parallel to BD. So we have a line through A, which you have drawn parallel to BD. So that's your line M. Point S moves such that its distance from line BD and vertex A are equal. So in this case, distance from fixed point and fixed line, it is same. So this locus of S will be a parabola. So this S will be a parabola whose focus is at A and directrix is at 1, 1, 
So we'll have this parabola and its vertex will be at 1 by 2, 1 by 2. So vertex for this parabola will be 1 by 2, 1 by 2. That says if the locus of S cuts M at T2 and T3, so this is T2, this is T3 and AC at T1. So you will find area of this triangle T1, T2, T3. Now basically T2, T3 it is latest set term. So T2, T3 it is equal to 4A and this T1A it is distance from vertex to the focus and it is equal to A which is under root of 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4 which is 1 by root 2. Now once we have these values we can find area of this triangle. So area of this triangle will be this 1 by 2 and then 4a into a so it will be this 2a square now a square is 1 by 2 so area of this triangle is 1 square unit and that's your option c so answer to this question is a c and c now here the question is eight squares of radius one unit kept on a table with their centers at the vertices of regular octagon and each square touching its two neighbors if the sphere is placed in the center of the table touching all the eight spheres, then its radius is. Now what we'll do is, we'll view the situation from the top view as well as from the front view. Now this is the top view of this question where we can see the centers of all the circles where corresponding positions on this octagon and as you can see they are intersecting circles. Actually they are not intersecting circles but touching spheres. Now if we look at their front view then on the table at the center, we'll have this sphere whose radius is r, and then there'll be two smaller spheres touching it. And that is the reason when you go look from the top, you won't see circles touching each other. Now, this radius is 1, and this radius is r. And this is distance between the centers D. Now this is 1 and this is R. And this length is R minus 1. So in this triangle say C1, C2 and A. This is 90. Then we can write C1, C2 square will be equal to A C1 square plus A c2 square. Now c1 c2 is 1 plus r. So it will be this r plus 1 square. Now a c1 square it is distance between the centers d square plus a c2 square and a c2 square is r minus 1 square. So from here we get d square as 4 r and that's our first equation. Now if we look at this distance d from the top view then this distance is distance between the centers so it is this distance d and of this length it is 1 and 1 2 units and this angle is 2 pi by 8 which is pi by 4 now we can find d using cosine rule we can write cos pi by 4 will be equal to d square plus d square minus 2 square upon 2d square so it will be this 1 by root 2 d square minus 2 upon d square now we can simplify this as d square that is root 2 d square minus 2 root 2 or basically d square is 2 root 2 upon 2 root 2 minus 1. Now if we rationalize this, it will be this 2 root 2 root 2 plus 1. Now d square is equal to 4r. 
So if we equate d square with 4r, we get 4r equals 2 root 2, root 2 plus 1. Now 2 root 2 and 4 will cancel, so it will be this root 2 here, then this r will be 1 plus 1 by root 2 and that's your option D. Now the question is, inside a semicircle of radius 1 unit, two circles of radius R1 and R2 are drawn, each touching the circumference and diameter of the semicircle and also touches each other externally. Then this box maximum R1 plus R2 is where this box X represents integral value nearest to X. So it is not greatest in the function of X. Now here we have the semicircle. And then we have two circles touching each other and also this semicircle. Let this point of contact be A and this be B. And if we draw their common tangent, let this be M. Now basically, these three lines they'll be equal. Now suppose this is C. Now suppose AM equals MB equals MC and let it be A. So let this distance be A. Now we know that AB is length of direct common tangent between the two circles. Now radius of this circle is say R1 and radius of this other circle is R2. Then we know that AB is equal to 2 times under root R1, R2. So basically these lengths AM, BM and CM, they are under root R1, R2. Now suppose this angle is theta. Then if from the center we draw perpendiculars, Then this is R1 and this half angle is theta by 2. So we can write 10 theta by 2 is R1 upon A. So this R1 it will be A 10 theta by 2. And in the same way for the second circle, we know that this angle is pi minus theta. So this half angle is pi by 2 minus theta by 2. So it will be this A cot theta by 2. So we have got R1 and R2 in terms of A and theta. Now suppose center of this semicircle is at O. Then if we join these two and these two, this length is 1, then this length C1O, it will be 1 minus R1 and the same way this C2O it will be 1 minus R2. Now this AC1 is R1 and BC2 is R2 then from here we can write this AO square it will be 1 minus R1 square minus R1 square, so it will be 1 minus 2 R1 and the same way PO square is 1 minus 2 R2. Now we know that AO plus OB, it is AB and AB is 2A. So from here we can write under root of 1 minus 2 R1 plus under root of 1 minus 2 R2 it is equal to 2a and r1 is a 10 theta by 2 so it will be this 1 minus 2 a 10 theta by 2 plus under root of 1 minus 2 a cot theta by 2 and it is equal to 2a. Now what we will do is we will take this cot expression on the right hand side and we can write under root of 1 minus 2a 10 theta by 2 will be equal to 2a minus under root of 
1 minus 2a cot theta by 2 it will be square it will get 1 minus 2a 10 theta by 2 it will be 4a square plus 1 minus 2a cot theta by 2 minus 4a under root of 1 minus 2a cot theta by 2. Now here this 1 and 1 will cancel. We will cancel this 2a also. So we can write this as cot theta by 2 minus 10 theta by 2 minus 2a will be equal to minus 2 under root of 1 minus 2a cot theta by 2. Now we will square it again. We can write cot square theta by 2 plus 10 square theta by 2 plus 4a square minus 2 cot theta into 10 theta is 1 minus 4a cot theta by 2 and plus 4a 10 theta by 2 it is 4 minus 8a cot theta by 2. Now we can write this as cot square theta by 2 plus 10 square theta by 2 and here it is plus 4a and here we will take cot theta by 2 plus 10 theta by 2 and then we have this minus 6 plus 4 a square equals 0. Now what we will do is we add 2 and subtract 2 so we can write this as cot theta by 2 plus 10 theta by 2 whole square plus 2 into 2a cot theta by 2 plus 10 theta by 2 and plus 2a whole square and it will be equal to 8. Now this is a square plus b square plus 2ab so we can write this as 2a plus cot theta by 2 plus 10 theta by 2 whole square it is equal to 8 or 2a plus cot theta by 2 plus 10 theta by 2 it is equal to plus or minus 2 root 2 and since a is positive and these angles theta by 2 they are acute we are going to consider only positive values so this is 2 root 2 now this is 2a and if we change it in sine and cos this is cos upon sine sine upon cos so cos square theta plus sine square theta will be 1 so it will be 1 upon cos theta by 2 into sine theta by 2 we will multiply and divide everything with 2 now this 2 here will cancel we will get this as sin theta. So this a plus cosec theta will be equal to root 2 or this a simply root 2 minus cosec theta. Now we already know r1 is a 10 theta by 2 and r2 is a cot theta by 2 we define maximum value of r1 plus r2 so it will be this a and then 10 theta by 2 plus cot theta by 2 now this is a now again we will change it in sine and cos so it will be this 1 upon sine theta by 2 cos theta by 2 we will multiply and divide everything with 2 so it will be this 2a sine theta now a is root 2 minus cosec theta so we can write this r1 plus r2 as now this is 2a and maybe this 2 root 2 minus cosec theta upon sin theta which also is cosec theta so we can write this r1 plus r2 as 2 and then root 2 cosec theta minus cosec square theta now this r1 plus r2 is a function of theta. We have to maximize and minimize it. Now we will differentiate this. So 
let this expression be e so we let d e upon d theta will be 2 and then root 2 and cosec theta is minus cosec theta cot theta and then minus 2 cosec theta and then minus cosec theta into cot theta equals 0 so from here we get either cosec theta is 0 or cot theta is 0 or cosec theta is 1 by root 2 now cosec theta cannot be 0 and cosec theta cannot be 1 by root 2 so the only critical point that we get here is cot theta equals 0 that means theta equals pi by 2 so we have this critical point at pi by 2 now we have to find sine before and after pi by 2 so what we'll do is we'll take up general point pi by 4 now cosec pi by 4 is root 2 and cot pi by 4 is 1 so this is 2 into minus 2 and this is plus 4 so this is plus and minus so we'll have a local maxima at pi by 2 so it is a point of local maxima and we have to find maximum value of r1 plus r2 so we'll get maximum value of r1 plus r2 if we put theta as pi by 2 so if we put theta as pi by 2 then this r1 plus r2 max it will be now cosec 90 is 1 so it will be this 2 into root 2 minus 1 so the maximum value of r1 plus r2 is 2 times root 2 minus 1 which is nearly 0.83 now this is not greatest linear function this is integral value nearest to x this value is 1 and that is the answer to this question now here the question is in a parallelogram ABCD with angle A equals 60 the bisector of angle B is drawn which cuts the side CD at point E the circle S1 of radius R is inscribed in the triangle ECB and another circle S2 is inscribed in trapezoid ABED so here we have this parallelogram A, B, C, D with this angle A, 60. If angle A is 60, then this angle, it is 120. So bisector of angle B will intersect this side C, D at E and this angle, it is 60 and this angle will also be 60. That's it. A circle S1 is inscribed in ECD. So we have this circle S1 inscribed here, and we have another circle S2, which is inscribed in this trapezoid ABED. Now it is given that the radius of circle S1 is R. So for S1, radius is r and for s2 suppose it is r1 now first question is we have to find value of radius of s1 now clearly this angle is 60 that means this angle is also 60 so this triangle bec is an equilateral triangle so if it is an equilateral triangle and if we join this point here this is 90, this is suppose it's center C1, then this value it is R and this is suppose P. Now we know that PC1 upon BP it is 1 is to 3. Now PC1 is R, so from here we get value of BP is 3R and BP is equal to diameter of this second circle 
So from here we get 2R1 equals 3R or R1 equals 3R by 2. That means this A, it matches with S. So this A, it matches with S. Now this B is value of distance between centers of S1 and S2. So we have to find distance between centers of S1 and S2. Now we will drop this perpendicular here. This is C2 and we will find this length. Now this length here is 3R. This is R. So this length here will be 2R. And this is 3R by 2. So 2R minus 3R by 2 is R by 2. So this distance it is R by 2. And say this point is Q. So value of C1 Q is R by 2. Now we have to find the value of C2 Q and let this point be R. So what we will do is we will join this center with B. Now this angle is 60, so this angle will be 30 degrees. Then we can write 1030, it is 3R by 2 into BR or BR, it will be 3 root 3 R by 2. Now BR is same as C2 Q. So from here we can write C1 C2 square it is equal to C2 Q square plus C1 Q square. Now C2 Q square is same as BR square so there will be 27 R square by 4 and plus C1 Q square and there will be R square by 4. So this is 28 by 4 7 so it will be 7 R square. So C1 C2 it is under root 7r. So distance between their centers it is root 7r that means this d it matches with r. Now c is length of common tangent of s1 and s2. Now they will have a direct common tangent as well as a transverse common tangent. So for the c part we will calculate length of direct common tangent and it is given by under root of d square minus R1 minus R2 square and length of transverse common tangent that is under root of D square minus R1 plus R2 whole square. Now this D is distance between centers and that is under root 7R. So here we will write this is under root of and this is 7R square minus now R1 minus R2 is now R1 is 3R by 2 and R2 here is R. So if we subtract them, it will be r by 2. So there will be r square by 4. Now this is 28. 28 minus 1, 27. And 27 is 3 root 3 r by 2. And length of transverse common tangent will be under root 7 r square minus. Now this is r1 plus r2. There will be 5r by 2 whole square. So 25r square by 4. Now this is 28. So it will be this root 3 r by 2. So in this case, they have asked for length of tangent and the option which matches this option q. So this c, it matches with q. And then option d is find the value of length ce. Now c is effectively length of this equilateral triangle. So suppose this length is L, then we know that L cos 30 is equal to 3R. So we get L cos 30 equals 3R and cos 30 is root 3 by 2. So it will be this L root 3 by 2 equals 3R. Then this L is 2 root 3R. So value of C is 2 root 3R. That means this D, it matches with E. And that is the answer to this question. 
Now here the question is, the line LX plus MY plus N equals 0 intersects the curve AX square plus 2HXY plus BY square equals 1 at the points P and Q. The circle on PQ as diameter passes through the origin. Prove that N square A plus B equals L square plus M square. So here we have this curve which is AX square plus 2HXY plus by square equals 1 and then we have this line lx plus my plus n equals 0. Now these two points are p and q. Now it says the circle on pq as diameter passes through origin. So we have this circle which is drawn on pq as diameter and it passes through origin. Now since pq is a diameter that means this angle will be 90 degrees. Now we have to find this condition that this angle is 90. Now we know that in all these questions, what we do is we make the curve homogeneous and we make the curve homogeneous using these two equations. Now first we will take this equation of line which is Lx plus My plus N equals 0 and we can write this as Lx plus My it is equal to minus n or simply lx plus my upon minus n and it is equal to 1. Now we'll take this equation of curve which is ax square plus 2hxy plus by square equals 1. Now all these three terms they are of degree 2 so we have to make this degree 2 to make it a homogeneous equation. So what we can do is we can simply write this one as 1 square or we write this as ax square plus 2hxy plus by square and it will be equal to lx plus my upon minus n whole square. Now we can write this as a n square x square plus 2h n square xy plus b n square y square and it will be equal to L square X square plus M square Y square plus 2 LM XY. Now we can write this equation as A N square minus L square X square plus B N square minus M square Y square plus 2 H N square minus 2LM xy equals 0. Now we know that a pair of straight lines that are perpendicular if sum of coefficients of x square and y square is 0. So from here if this angle is 90 degrees then the condition that we get is a n square minus l square plus b n square minus m square it must be 0 or we can write this as a plus b n square it should be equal to L square plus M square and this is what we need to prove in this question. So the only concept of circle that we need here is angle in a semicircle is 90 degrees. Now here the question is find the equation of the circle which touches the two lines and this given circle and is contained in the given circle. Now basically this circle it passes through origin and these two lines there are also pair of lines drawn from origin. So here we are looking for this circle which touches these two lines and also this given circle. Now we know that center of this circle will lie on angle bisector of these lines and we know that equation of angle bisector is given by x square minus y square upon a minus b and that will be equal to x y upon h. The equation of angle bisectors is x square minus y square equals to 0 that is either y equals x or y equals minus x. And since this circle it lies in the first quadrant so this angle bisector will be 
along y equals x. So this line is y equals x. Now let this point be h comma h and center of this circle is at 4 comma 4. Now radius of this bigger circle is under root 16 plus 16 and that will be 4 root 2. So radius of this smaller circle will be this diameter which is 8 root 2 minus h root 2. So there will be 8 minus h root 2. All we need to do is to find the value of h and r. Now suppose one of these lines it is given by y equals mx then perpendicular distance from the center will be equal to its radius. So then we can write this mh minus h upon under root of 1 plus m square will be equal to this r dash. What we will do is we will square it. We can write m minus 1 square into h square will be equal to r dash square into 1 plus m square and here will be this m square plus 1 minus 2m into h square and there will be r dash square plus r dash square m square. Now we can write this as h square minus r dash square m square minus 2h square m plus h square minus r dash square equals 0. Now we can change this pair of lines in slope form by taking y by x as m. Now this equation will be 7m square minus 18m plus 7 equals 0. Now both the equations, they represent the same pair of lines. That means h square minus r dash square by 7 is equal to, now this is minus 2h square upon minus 18. So there will be simply h square by 9 and this again is h square minus r dash square by 7. Now from here we can write 9 h square minus 7 h square. So there will be 2 h square and it will be equal to 9 r dash square. So basically this h is 3 r dash by root 2. Now we put the value of h here. So we can write r dash equals 8 root 2 minus root 2 h and minus root 2 h is 3 r dash. So value of r dash is 2 root 2 and value of h is 6. So the center of the circle is at 6 comma 6 and its radius is 2 root 2. So equation of this circle will be x minus 6 square plus y minus 6 square and that will be equal to 2 root 2 whole square. We can also write this as x square plus y square minus 12x minus 12y and this is 72. 72 minus 8 is 64. So plus 64 equals 0. And that is the answer to this question. Now the equation is let 2x square plus y square minus 3xy be the equation of pair of tangents drawn from the origin to the circle of radius 3 with center in the first quadrant. If a is one of the point of contact, then find the length of OA. So that's our axis. And then we have this circle in the first quadrant whose radius is 3. And we have pair of straight lines drawn from origin which are tangent to this circle. So this is O and this is A. Suppose this is B. We will find this OA. Now we are given that. Radius is 3 units.
Now the question is, a circle having center at C is made to pass through this point, touching these two straight lines at A and B. So we have these two straight lines. And they are 7x minus y equals 5 and x plus y equals minus 13. If we add them, we'll find their x coordinate and their x coordinate will be minus 1. And if we put x as minus 1, we'll get y as minus 12. So their point of intersection is minus 1, minus 12. And then there is a circle which touches both these straight lines. And it passes through this point 1, 2. Now we know that the center will lie on angle bisector of these two lines. So what we'll do is we'll find angle bisector, which is given by 7x minus y minus 5 and this is root 50 5 root 2 and is equal to plus minus x plus y plus 13 upon root 2 now this root 2 will cancel so we get this as 7x minus y minus 5 and will be equal to plus minus 5x plus 5 by plus 65 and if we take this plus sign we'll get this equation as 2x minus 6y minus 70 equals 0 which is x minus 3y equals 35 and if we take this minus sign we'll get 12x plus 4y plus 60 equals 0 and that will be 3x plus y plus 15 equals 0. Now, if we look at this line, 7x minus y equals 5, then this point 1 comma 2, it satisfies this line. So this is 7 minus 2, which is 5. So that means we are given this point and this point is 1 comma 2. So actually this point 1 comma 2, it lies on this line and this circle and basically it is their contact point. So we'll have two such circles. So we'll consider this first case. When center lies on this line, so we'll get h minus 3k that is equal to 35 and also this angle is 90, so product of slope is minus 1, so we'll get k minus 2 upon h minus 1 into slope of this line is 7 and this is equal to minus 1, so we'll get minus h plus 1 and it is equal to 7k minus 14 or this equation is h plus 7k and it is equal to 15. Now we will subtract first from second. So we will get 10k equals minus 20 that is value of k is minus 2 and if k is minus 2 value of h is 29. So its center will be at 29 comma minus 2 and its radius it will be under root of 28 square plus 4 square. Under root 800 and if we take this minus sign, then we'll have 3h plus k plus 15 equals 0. And here this is h plus 7k minus 15 equals 0. We multiply the second equation with 3, we'll get 3h plus 21k minus 45 equals 0. If we subtract it, we'll get 20k minus 60 equals 0. That is value of k is 3 and if value of k is 3 value of h is minus 6 so here we'll have center as minus 6 comma 3 and in this case radius will be under root of 7 square plus 1 square which is 
under root 50. So the radius of smaller circle is under root 50. That means this option B is correct. Now we will find area of this quadrilateral A, C, B, P. Now we know that area of this quadrilateral is R into under root S1 and under root S1 is this distance. So this distance is under root of 4 plus 14 square. So this is 10 root 2. Now we consider radius as this value which is 20 root 2. Then this area will be 20 root 2 into 10 root 2 which is 400 square unit and considering this, this area will be 10 root 2 into 5 root 2 which is 100 square unit. The option that we have here is this 100 square unit. So the correct options are A and B. Now here the question is we are given a pair of lines and this line and A is if there exists four circles which touch pair of lines and the line L simultaneously then the value of B can be. Now we are given equation of pair of straight lines as 2x square plus 5xy plus 2y square plus 4x plus 5y plus a equals 0. Now what we will do is we will find equation of two lines from here. Now here what we will do is we will first write equation of these two lines. There are many ways to solve them and one of the ways we know that slope of the two lines will depend on these first three terms and not these other linear terms and not on the other terms. So we can write this as 2m square plus 5m plus 2 equals 0. So there will be 2m square plus 4m plus m plus 2 equals 0. That means slope of this line is either minus 2 or it is minus 1 by 2. So slope of one of the line is minus 2 and the slope of other line is minus 1 by 2. Once we have slope, we need a point on these lines. And we can find the point of intersection using partial derivatives. So let this equation be s. So we'll partially differentiate this with respect to s. ds upon dx equals 0. So we'll get this as 4x plus 5y plus 4 equals 0. And we'll partially differentiate this with respect to y. We'll get this as 5x plus 4y plus 5 equals 0. Now we multiply this with 5 and this with 4. So we get 20 and 20 will cancel. So this is 25 minus 16 is 9y. We will get 9y as 0. So basically value of y is 0. And if you put y as 0, we will get x as minus 1. So these two lines, they intersect at minus 1 comma 0. Now once we have point and slope, we can write equation of two lines. So equation of lines, they will be given by y minus 0 minus 2 x plus 1 and y minus 0 minus 1 by 2 x plus 1. So one of the line is 2x plus y plus 2 equals 0 and the other line is x plus 2y plus 1 equals 0 and we are given this third line which is bx plus y plus 5 equals 0. Now before solving these four conditions we can work out some conditions of line. First we will work out the condition that these three lines they are concurrent. The lines 
there will be concurrent if 2 1 2 1 2 1 b 1 5 it is equal to 0 now we will expand it about this so we will get this as minus 3 b minus 0 plus 15 equals 0 that is and the value of b is 5 so if the value of b is 5 then all the three lines they are concurrent second condition is if third line is parallel to any one given lines so of this line is minus 2 and here the slope is minus b so you get b as 2 and for the second one if the slope is minus 1 by 2 and this is minus b so this b will be parallel to any of these lines if the value of b is either 2 or 1 by 2 so the three lines are concurrent if b is equal to 5 and two of them they are parallel if b is either 2 or 1 by 2 so now we can start solving this question so the condition we have here is the lines are concurrent That is, all the three lines, they pass through the same point. If B is 5 and two of them, they are parallel. If B is 2 or 1 by 2. Now this A is, there exists four circle which touch pair of lines and the line L simultaneously. So if B is neither of these three conditions then in all other cases these three lines they'll form a triangle and if they form a triangle in that case they'll have four circles which can touch these three lines so here value of p it should not be 5 2 or 1 by 2 so here it can take the value 4 and 1 so this a it matches with s and t now b is there exists two circles which touch pair of lines and the line L simultaneously. Now this is possible when two of the lines are parallel. So in this case, value of B can be 2 or 1 by 2. So this B, it matches with P and Q. Now C is there exists no circle which touches the pair of line simultaneously. That means They have to be concurrent. Value of B, it must be 5. So this C, it matches with R. And D is, if there exists infinite circles which touch pair of lines and the line L simultaneously, then the value of B cannot be. Now for the given equations, these are the only three cases possible. So in neither case, we'll have infinite circles possible. So B cannot be any of these five values. So this D, it matches with P, Q, R, S, N, T. And that is the answer to this question. Now here the question is, consider a family of circles passing through intersection point of these two lines and having its center on the acute angle bisectors of the given line. Show that the common chord of each member of the family and the circle are concurrent. And if the point of concurrency is A, B, find the value of A plus B. Now both the lines, they pass through the point 1 comma 1. These two lines, they intersect at 1 comma 1. So this is your point, say A, 1 comma 1. Now for the first line, slope is 1 by root 3. And for the second line, slope is root 3. So one of them is going to make an angle of 30 degrees. And the other one is going to make an angle of 60 degrees. Now center of the circle, it lies on acute angle bisector of these two lines. Now we know that, now we know that this angle is 30 and this is 60. So this angle will be 45. So slope of this line is 45. So equation of this line, it will be y minus 1 
equals 1 x minus 1 so center of the circle will lie on y equals x line now suppose center of the circle is at h comma h then equation of this circle will be x minus h square plus y minus h square and it is equal to r square and r square is distance from the center to this point 1 comma 1 so it will be this h minus 1 square plus h minus 1 square now we simplify this we'll get this as x square plus y square minus 2hx minus 2hy now h square will cancel and here we'll get this as plus 4h minus 2 equals 0 we can add this as x square plus y square minus 2 and then minus 2h x plus y minus 2 equals 0 now equation of this other given circle is x square plus y square plus 4x minus 6y plus 5 equals to 0 and equation of common chord it is given by radical axis of the two circles so we'll subtract this first equation from second so this x square y square will cancel so we'll get this as 4x minus 6y plus 7 and then plus 2h x plus y minus 2 equals 0 so basically this equation is l1 plus 2h l2 equals to 0 where h is a parameter and it represents family of all the lines which pass through point of intersection of l1 and l2 so that fixed point is intersection of these two lines so we have to find point of intersection of 4x minus 6y plus 7 equals 0 and x plus y minus 2 equals 0. Now we'll multiply the second equation with 6. So it'll be this 6, 6 and 12. And if we add them, we'll get this as 10x equals 5. So value of x is 1 by 2. And we put x as 1 by 2, we'll get y as 3 by 2. So basically that fixed point is 1 by 2 comma 3 by 2. Now that's your A and this is your B. We need to find the value of A plus B. Now the value of A plus B is 4 by 2 which is simply 2 and that's your option C. Now the question is a circle S is described on the focal chord of this parabola by square equals 4x. So we have this focal chord which passes through this point 1 comma 0 and it makes an angle of 45 degrees. Now suppose these points are 80 square 280. So there'll be T1 square 2T1 and T2 square 2T2. Now since it is a focal chord then T1 into T2 it is minus 1 and also if we write it slow then we get 2 T1 minus T2 upon T1 square minus T2 square and that will be equal to 1045 which is 1. So here we get T1 plus T2 it is equal to 2. So now we have sum of roots and product of roots. So we can write this equation as T square minus 2T minus 1 equals 0 then value of T is 1 plus minus root 2. So suppose t1 is 1 plus root 2 and t2 is 1 minus root 2. Now t1 square will be 3 plus 2 root 2 and t2 square will be 3 minus 2 root 2. Now center of the circle is midpoint of these two points say a b. So this c will be t1 square plus t2 square by 2. So if we add them, we'll get this as 3 and 2 t1 plus t2 by 2. Now t1 plus t2 is 2 by 2 is simply 2. So center of the circle is at 3 comma 2. And that's your option B. 
we also have to find radius of this circle. Now we know that circle is drawn on this focal cord as diameter. So basically its diameter is length of focal cord and we know that it is given by a t1 minus t2 whole square. Now in this case a is 1 and t1 minus t2 is 2 root 2 square and that is it. So radius of this circle is 4 units. That means this option A is also correct. Now we can write equation of this circle. So equation of this circle will be x minus 3 whole square plus y minus 2 whole square equals 16. Or we can write x square plus y square minus 6x minus 4y minus 3 equals 0. Now we will get this circle, center is at 3 comma 2 and radius is 4 units. So it will be drawn like this and it is going to touch this line which is x equal to minus 1 and this is also a standard result. A circle described on focal cord as diameter is going to Write the questions. Let this p x y be a point. Satisfying x square plus y square equals to one, which is a unit circle with center at origin. So what we'll do is we'll take this point p s cos theta comma sine theta. Now it says let the maximum value of this expression be lambda. So we have this expression say e, and it is x square plus y square plus four x y. Now cos square theta plus sin square theta it is 1 plus 4 sin theta cos theta so it will be this 1 plus 2 sin 2 theta. Now maximum value of sin 2 theta is 1 so value of lambda is simply 3. Now number of tangents drawn from this point lambda comma 1 so we have this point say a and this is 3 comma 1 and we are find number of tangents which can be drawn to this hyperbola x minus 2 square minus y square equals 1. Now if we find asymptotes to this curve, asymptotes are x minus 2 plus minus y equals 0. So the two asymptotes are x plus y minus 2 equals to 0 and x minus y minus 2 equals to 0. Now if we put this point here, we will get 3 minus 1 minus 2. So this point A will lie on this asymptote. So from this point, no tangent can be drawn to this hyperbola, but then this point, it does lie on one of the asymptote. So number of tangents or asymptotes drawn from this point is 1 and that's your option A. Now the question is consider two straight lines each of which is tangent to both the circles x square plus y square equals 1 by 2 and parabola y square equals 4x. So we have a circle and a parabola. Equation of circle is x square plus y square equals 1 by 2. 
and then we have this parabola which is y square equals 4x here the value of a is 1 then we have pair of tangents common to both this circle and parabola and these lines they intersect at this point q now first we have to find this point q now equation of tangent to this circle will be given by y equals mx plus minus r which is 1 by root 2 under root 1 plus m square and equation of tangent to this parabola will be given by y equals mx plus a by m and a is 1 so it will be this 1 by m now since we are talking about common tangent slope is same and the equation should be same so here we will get this condition that plus minus 1 by root 2 under root 1 plus m square it should be equal to 1 by m when we square it, we will get n to the power 4 plus m square minus 2 equals 0 or m square plus 2 into m square minus 1 equals to 0. So, value of m is either plus 1 or value of m is minus 1. So, we have two lines. One of the slope is 1 and the other slope is minus 1. Now, we put m as 1, we will get equation of tangent as y equals x plus 1. And the equation of other tangent is y equals minus x minus 1. Now they'll intersect at minus 1 comma 0. So coordinate of this point q is minus 1 comma 0. Now it says consider an ellipse whose center is at origin and whose semi-major axis is O q. So we have an ellipse with center at origin and semi-major axis is this a and this a is 1 and length of minor axis is root 2 that means 2b is root 2 so b is 1 by root 2 then which of the following statements is or are correct now first we have to find its eccentricity now we know that b square is a square into 1 minus e square so we we'll get this as 1 by 2 and this is 1 minus e square so value of e is 1 by root 2 and length of later septum is 2b square upon a. So it will be this 2 and b square is 1 by 2 and a is 1. So length of later septum is 1. So eccentricity is 1 by root 2 and length of later septum is 1. That means this option a is correct and option b is incorrect. C is area of region bounded by ellipse between the lines x equals 1 by root 2 and x equal to 1. So here we are talking about this ellipse with center at origin, focus at 1 by root 2 comma 0 and this point is 1 comma 0. So we are talking about this area. Now since there is a symmetry in the problem, area above x axis is the same as area below x axis. So this area will be 2 times and then this integral from 1 by root 2 to 1 and then by dx. Now, equation of this ellipse is x square plus 2y square equals 1. So value of y is 1 by root 2 under root 1 minus x square. So it will be this 1 by root 2 into under root of 1 minus x square dx. Now this is simply root 2 and this area it will be root 2 and here will be this x by 2 under root 1 minus x square plus a square upon 2 sin inverse x from 1 by root 2 to 1. Now we will simplify this. So this area it will be root 2 and if we put x as 1 it will be 0 minus if we put 1 by root 2 it will be 1 upon 2 root 2 and then into under root of 1 minus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 and here it will be this sine inverse 1 minus 
साइन इनवर्स वन बाय रूट टू नाउ दिस इज रूट टू एंड हियर दिस इज माइनस वन बाय फोर एंड प्लस वन बाय टू एंड साइन इनवर्स वन इज पाइ बाय टू एंड हियर दिस इज पाइ बाय फोर सो दिस इज पाइ बाय एट सो इट इज रूट टू इंटू पाइ बाय एट माइनस वन बाय फोर एंड वी कैन एट दिस इज पाइ माइनस टू अपॉन फोर रूट टू स्क्वायर यूनिट सो एरिया बिटवीन एक्स इक्वल्स वन बाय रूट टू एंड एक्स इक्वल टू वन इज वन अपॉन फोर रूट टू इंटू पाइ माइनस टू एंड दैट्स योर ऑप्शन सी The correct options are A and C. Now the question is: Let P be a point on parabola y square equals 4x, which is at a shortest distance from the center of the circle. And we have this circle whose center is at 2 comma 8, and its radius is 2 units. Let Q be the point on the circle dividing the line segment SP internally. Then Which of the following options is or are true? So we have this parabola. Y square equals four x, and then we have this circle, which is at two comma eight, and radius equals two units. Now, point on this parabola, which is at a shortest distance from this circle, will be along this common normal. So, what we'll do is we'll write equation of normal to this parabola, and we know that equation of normal is given by y plus t x equals two a t plus a t cube, and in this case, value of a is one, so it'll be this y plus t x equals. 2t t plus t cube, and this normal will pass through center of the circle. So it will be this 8 plus 2t equals 2t plus t cube. Now this 2t will cancel, so value of t is simply 2. So coordinate of this point P will be a t square. A is 1 and t is 2, so it will be this 4 comma 2 a t. So this point is 4 comma 4. So we have this S, which is two comma eight, and this point it is Q. Now, if we find S P, S P is under root of. Now four minus two 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 square is four, plus eight minus four 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 square is sixteen. So it'll be this root twenty and root twenty is two. Root five. That means this option A it is correct. Now radius is two. That means. S Q is two, then Q P will be S P minus S Q, so there will be two root five minus two. So this ratio S Q upon Q P will be one upon root five minus one. If we rationalize it, we get this as root five plus one by four. That means this option B is incorrect. Now, see, x intersect of the normal to the parabola at p is six. Now we know that t is two, so equation of normal will be y plus two x, and that will be equal to four plus eight, twelve. And for x axis intercept, we'll put y as zero. We'll get x as six. So it'll intersect x axis at six comma zero. That means this option C is also Correct, and D is slope of tangent to the circle at Q is one by two. Now, basically, this P S is normal. Slope of this line is minus two. Then slope of tangent will be one by two. That means this option D is also correct. So the correct options are A, C, and D. Now, the question is: Tangents are drawn to the parabola y square equals four x from the point six comma five to touch the parabola at Q and R. Now it says if C one is a circle which touches the parabola at Q and C two is a circle which touches the parabola at R, 
both the circles C1 and C2, they pass through focus of parabola. Then we have to solve this question. Now here we have this parabola. y square equals 4x. And then from a point P, 6, 1, 5, we have drawn two tangents. which touch this parabola at Q and R. So what we'll first do is we'll find the Q and R. Now we know that for this parabola, y square equals 4x, value of a is 1, then equation of tangent is given by ty equals x plus a t square. So in this case, it will be t y equals x plus t square. Now we need this tangent which passes through this point 6, 1, 5. So we'll put x as 6 and y is 5. So we'll get t square minus 5 plus 6 equals 0. So here the value of t will be either 2 or 3. So coordinate of this point q will be a t square 280 which is 4 comma 4 and for this point R it will be a t square 9 and 2 a t is 6, 9 comma 6. So the two points are 4 comma 4 and 9 comma 6. Now this first question is find the area of this triangle PQR. Now we know that area of triangle is given by 1 by 2 x1 y1 1 so it will be this 6 5 1 4, 4, 1 and 9, 6, 1. Now we subtract. First from third. It will be this 3, 1, 0. And the second from first. Then it will be this minus 2, minus 1, 0. And then it will be this 6, 5, 1. Now we expand it. We will get this as minus 2 plus 3. So this is. 1 by 2. So value of this area is 1 by 2 and that's your option A. So area of triangle PQR is this option A. Now the second one is radius of circle C2. Now it says we have two circles C1 and C2 which pass through focus of parabola which is at 1 comma 0 and which touch these points. So this point is 1 comma 0 and then we have this circle. We have to find radius of this second circle C2. Now for this C2 what we will do is we will write equation of this tangent PR. And for R value of T is 3. So if we put 3 here we will get equation of PR as 3y equals x plus 9 or this equation is x minus 3y plus 9 equals 0. Now we can find equation of family of circles touching this line at this point 9 comma 6. So equation of family of circles will be given by x minus 9 square plus y minus 6 square plus lambda and then x minus 3y plus 9 equals to 0. Now this circle it passes through focus. So it will pass through 1 comma 0. We will put x as 1 and y as 0. If we put x as 1 we will get this as minus 8 square 64 and y is 0. So it will be this 6 square 36 plus lambda. Uh, 1 plus 9 equals 0. Now this is 110. So value of lambda is minus 10. So we can write equation of this circle as x square plus 81 minus 18x y square plus 36 minus 12y minus 10x plus 30y 
minus 90 equals 0 or this equation will be x square plus y square minus 28x plus 18y plus 27 equals 0. Now center of the circle is at Fourteen comma minus nine, and its radius will be fourteen square plus nine square minus twenty-seven, which is under root two fifty, which is five root ten. So radius of this second circle is. 5 root 10 and that's your option B. And the next part is the common chord of the two circles passes through which of the following center of this triangle PQR. And for this again we have to find equation of the circle C1. For circle 1 equation of tangent will be given by 2y equals x plus 4 or x minus 2y plus 4 equals 0 and this point of contact is 4 comma 4 we can write this equation as x minus 4 square plus y minus 4 square plus lambda x minus 2y plus 4 equals 0 it will pass through 1 comma 0 so this is 9 plus 16 plus lambda plus 5 equals 0 so value of lambda is minus 5 so we will get this equation as x square plus y square plus 16 minus 8x plus 16 minus 8y minus 5x plus 10y minus 20 equals 0 or it will be this x square plus y square minus 13x plus 2y plus 16 equals 0. Plus 12 equals 0. Now once we have equation of both the circles, we can find equation of their common chord which is basically their radical axis. So it will be 28 minus 13 minus 15x 18y minus 2y plus 16y and 27 minus 12 is 15. So this equation of common chord is minus 15x plus 16y plus 15. So equation of common chord is given by minus 15x plus 16y plus 15 equals 0. Now which of the point is going to pass through this common chord? Now easiest one is centroid. So first we will find its centroid. Now centroid is given by 6 plus 4 10 10 plus 9 19 so it will be this 19 by 3 and then we have 15 by 3 which is 5 so we put this we will get this as 5 so it will be minus 19 into 5 plus 80 plus 15 so it is minus 95 plus 95 which is 0 that means centroid is going to lie on this common chord so it will pass through centroid of this triangle and that's your option C. The correct options are A, B and C. Now here the question is center of the circle which passes through the point 0 comma 1 and touching this curve y equals x square is 2 comma 4. So we have this parabola y equals x square and here we have a point on this parabola which is 2 comma 4 
that is center of the circle passing through this point and touching this parabola at this point. So we'll have a circle which will touch this parabola at this point 2 comma 4. Now this point it lies on this parabola. We can find equation of tangent to this parabola. This point P and this equation it is given by t equals 0. It will be 5 plus 4 by 2 and it is equal to 2x. So equation of this tangent is 4x minus y minus 4 equals 0. Now what we will do is we will find equation of family of circles which touches the straight line at this point 2 comma 4. So equation of family of circles will be given by x minus 2 square plus y minus 4 square plus lambda 4x minus y minus 4 equals to 0. Now from this family we will need a circle which passes through this point 0 comma 1. So we will put the value of x as 0 and y as 1. So it will be this 4 plus 9 plus lambda minus 5. So value of lambda is 13 by 5. So equation of this circle will be x square plus y square minus 4x minus 8y plus 20 plus 52 upon 5x minus 13 upon 5y minus 52 upon 5 equals 0. Now we can write this equation as x square plus y square and it is minus 20 plus 52. So plus 32 upon 5x and here it is minus 8 minus 13. 40 and 13, 53. So there will be minus 53 by 5y and this is 100 minus 52 which is 48 by 5 equals 0. Now center of the circle will be at minus 16 by 5 and 53 by 10. Now here the question is let w1 and w2 denote the circles x square plus y square plus 10x minus 24y minus 87. So that's your w1 and then the second circle which is w2. That says let m be the smallest possible value of a for which this line y equals ax it contains the center of the circle that is externally tangent to w2 and internally tangent to w1. So basically we are talking about a circle which touches w1 internally and w2 externally and whose center lie on this line. y equals ax and the smallest possible value of a is given as m. Now it says if m square is p upon q then find the value of p plus q. Now for w1 center is at minus 5 comma 12 and its radius will be 25 plus 144 plus 87 and there will be 6 256 which is 16. So center one is minus 5 12 and radius is 16 and for this second circle center is at 5 comma 12 and its radius will be 25 plus 144 minus 
153. So there'll be 169 minus 153, which is simply 4. And if we look at C1, C2, C1, C2 is simply 10. Now suppose center of this required circle is H comma AH and its radius is R. Now W1 and W, they touch each other internally. That means distance between the centers, which is under root of H plus 5 whole square plus AH minus 12 whole square will be equal to R1 minus R2. So it will be 16 minus R. Now W2 and W, they are externally tangent. That means C1, C2 equals R1 plus R2. Now in this case, it will be this under root of H minus 5 whole square plus AH minus 12 whole square and they will be equal to 4 plus R. Now we will add them. So this R will get eliminated. So now we can write this as under root of H plus 5 plus AH minus 12 whole square plus under root of H minus 5 plus AH minus 12 whole square and they will be equal to 20. Now this is center of the circle C1 and this is center of the circle C2 and this center is C. Now if you look at this equation then this is CC1 plus CC2 it is equal to 20. So that means this point C will lie on an ellipse whose foci are at plus minus 5,12 and this is equal to 2a and we use capital A so 2a equals 20 and distance between centers which is 10 it is 2a so 2a is 10 so from here we'll get the value of e as 1 by 2 and value of a as 10 and b square is a square into 1 minus e square and that will be 100 1 minus 1 by 4 and that should be 75 so we have this ellipse with focus at minus 5 comma 12 and plus 5 comma 12 so its center will be at 0 comma 12 so it will be this ellipse whose equation is x square upon 100 plus y minus 12 whole square upon 75 and it is equal to 1. Now we have to find a point on this ellipse so that line joining the point to origin has the least slope. So we'll have to find this point where this line will be tangent to this ellipse. So we have to find this slope. Now we can write equation of tangent to this ellipse. So it will be y minus 12 mx plus minus under root of a square m square. So there will be 100 m square plus 75. And we want this tangent which passes through 0 comma 0. So we will put x is 0 and y is 0. So there will be minus 12 equals plus minus under root of 100 m square plus 75. Now we square it, we can write 144 equals 100 m square plus 75 or 100 m square equals 69. So value of m square is 69 by 100. So we'll get the least value of a which is m says so that m square is 69 by 100. Now it says this m square is p by q. We have to find the value of p plus q. In this case, value of p plus q, it is 169. So answer to this question is value of p plus q is 169.